Hey Moo Bubblers, it's Kendall and on today's video we're going to be talking about the best places to live in West London. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. on our list is Kensington and Chelsea. Now we've all heard of the UK reality TV show Made in Chelsea, well this is exactly that. Kensington and Chelsea is literally the perfect example of a typical West London area at its finest, full of so many posh restaurants and cafes, home to the Natural History Museum and the B&A. There are also so many different pubs, two in particular, the Churchill Arms and the Britannia, which is actually very old and is a super popular place to visit. If you're a tourist or if you're a local, a lot of locals hang out there because apparently the Sunday roasts are amazing. So one of the things we really love about West London is the fact that there are so many beautiful parks everywhere. And in Kensington and Chelsea, the biggest park and the most well-known one is Holland Park. Now Holland Park is absolutely beautiful and has so many different activities for everyone from kids to parents, families, friends, whatever you want to do. There's tennis, there's football, there's an outdoor gym, there's so much to get involved in and it's a really fun place to have a Sunday picnic and just enjoy the greenery, the nature and your weekend. So if you are someone who loves a market, especially on the weekend, I would suggest visiting Goldbourne Road Market. This market has a lot of character, a lot more variety, and is a local hotspot. Kensington and Chelsea is super well known for its food and sort of outdoor activities and things to do. But one of the main roads I wanna mention is King's Road. And King's Road is just well known throughout London for being a road that's full of fun activities. So from really quaint, cute coffee shops to uh, shopping in general, stores, clothes, items, things that you can buy, to the most awesome garden center called Russell's. So if you are living in Kensington and Chelsea, I have no doubt that's where you're gonna be spending most of your time. Another positive about living in Kensington and Chelsea is you have Westway Sports Center. So for all you fitness people out there that absolutely love activities, all year round, in summer, winter, come rain, snow, sun, whatever it is, this is the place to be. In terms of transport, you have Sloan Square, which connects to the Circle and District Line. Number two on our list is South Kensington. South Kensington is located in the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, and is west and southwest of Charing Cross. South Kensington boasts some of the most exclusive real estate in London, and is home to so many expats, including people from South Africa, <laughs> If only I lived in Salkin, it'd be amazing. But there is a massive, massive French community and apparently it's one of the largest French communities outside of France, which is absolutely insane. The reason there is such a huge French community within South Kensington is because you have the French embassy and you have the Lessie Francais Charles de Gaulle, which is the French school. What I absolutely love about South Kensington, and I mean I absolutely love it, I go there often, is the fact that it really does feel very French. It feels like you're in this mini Paris with the cobbled roads and the quaint little delis and the restaurants have kind of this French flair to them. And so if that's what you love and you want to feel like you're somewhere else in Europe, then South Kensington really is a place for you to settle down and just enjoy what it has to offer. South Kensington is also home to some of the world's most incredible museums, one of them being the Natural History Museum, which is the most incredible experience if you haven't done it. I would really recommend going and doing that. But there's also the Royal Albert Hall, which is where they host the BAFTAs and they have about 350 performances every single year. Now, if you're someone who absolutely loves to shop, then Sloan Avenue and Fulham Road are where you wanna be because they are home to some really incredible designer outlets. But there's also a lot of flower shops, antique stores, other kind of sort of budget friendly uh, shops and some really quaint little delis that again make you feel like you're in Paris. In terms of food, there is literally so much that you can choose from on a night out in South Ken. Of course, you have your typically like French styled cuisine, but you also have your Italian, you have Indian food, you have Thai food, Polish food, Japanese food, and so many other different cuisines to choose from. In terms of transport, you have South Kensington Station, which is home to the District Line, the Piccadilly Line, and the Circle Line. Number three on our list is Notting Hill. Now, when I think of Notting Hill, I automatically think of Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts. Notting Hill, the movie, has literally made the area even more famous than it already was and already is. Notting Hill stretches from Kensington Gardens on one side 
all the way to Chelsea and Holland Park on the other. Now, if you are privileged enough to live in Notting Hill, well, lucky you, it's one of the most incredible places to live in London in terms of real estate. The thing about Notting Hill that I absolutely love is the fact that not only is it quite sort of pristine and exclusive and the properties are absolutely beautiful, but it also has this like bohemian sort of creative, grungy side of Notting Hill that makes it way more eclectic and fun and an experience as a whole. So Notting Hill is known for two very particular things. One, the Portobello Road Market, which has absolutely everything you can imagine. The other thing being the Notting Hill Carnival. Now the Notting Hill Carnival is the second largest street carnival in the world outside of Rio. And it happens in August on a summer's weekend, once a year, and is quite an experience. In terms of shopping, like I mentioned before, you can find absolutely anything in Notting Hill. It ranges from your designer stores all the way to retro CD shops and antique bookstores and old posters and vinyls, all the things that are just that just make Notting Hill so interesting. In terms of food, again, there is so much variety, but there are different extremes. So you have the fancy restaurants that everyone wants to dine at and that everyone wants to be seen at. And then you have the really fast takeout places that just make really authentic local cuisine. If you're wanting to try a truly local fast food place, then go to Alpha's Fish and Chips. Their fish and chips are absolutely incredible. In terms of transport, you are absolutely covered because Notting Hill is surrounded by four different tube stations. So you have Westbourne Park, you have Latimer Road, you have Ladbroke Grove, and you have Notting Hill Gate. The fourth one on our list is Fulham. Now Fulham is located west of Chelsea and is posh but affordable. So it's definitely not as expensive as Chelsea but is also a little bit more expensive than a lot of other areas. The beautiful thing about living in Fulham is you're surrounded by the River Thames and by greenery in terms of Bishop's Park. So Bishop's Park also has uh, the Fulham Palace which is a really lovely area to just have a Sunday picnic or go for a run or take the dog for a walk. So there are a lot of families that settle in Fulham because of the outdoor sort of family and Environment. So next to Bishop's Park is Fulham Football Club. So this is home to Fulham FC and it's called Craven Cottage. And then a little bit down the road in Chelsea you also have Stamford Bridge. So it's a really cool environment if you are living in Fulham then you literally have these matches right on your doorstep and it's a really fun experience on game day. It can be a little bit crowded but um, if you are a football fan, then it's totally worth it. Fulham is known for its trendy pubs and restaurants. There's so many different coffee shops and places to brunch and eat out and, you know, have your leisurely long lunches on the weekends, which is a big positive with living in Fulham. They also have the weekend market on North End Road, which is full of local fresh produce. So that's a really fun thing to do on the weekend, to go stock up on all your fresh fruit and veg to make sure that you're all set for the week. So that's a, quite a fun family occasion. The shopping in Fulham is absolutely fantastic as well, and it caters to your budget shoppers as well as your high spenders. In terms of transport, you have Fulham Broadway, you have Putney Bridge, and you have Parsons Green. Now, it can be a little bit crazy, especially during peak hours on the district line because it gets so crowded, but don't worry because there are a number of different bus routes. Otherwise, buy a bicycle. <laughs> One little fun fact, there are some notable residents within Fulham, such as Sir Roger Moore, Brian May and Lily Allen, as well as some others. So I definitely think that Fulham is a place to be. Number five is Shepherd's Bush. Shepherd's Bush is located just one mile west of Notting Hill and is kind of the sort of quirky, eclectic cousin of Notting Hill. In terms of housing, Shepherd's Bush has a lot of side streets that are really pretty and that house some really gorgeous terrace homes. However, you also have your really quirky, detached places and there's a lot of house sharing that goes on in Shepherd's Bush. It's definitely one of the more creative areas within West London and has a sort of rugged charm about it that people either love or hate. Shepherd's Bush is well known for its entertainment and of course its live music. And in Shepherd Bush you can find the O2 Shepherd Bush Empire which has 
had some of the most incredible musicians and comedians perform at. It's one of the capital's top music and comedy venues. Well, if you live in Shepherd's Bush, or even if you don't, and you're someone who loves to shop, you literally have an entire mall on your doorstep. Westfield Mall is there and has absolutely everything you can imagine, from stores, to restaurants, to delis, to coffee shops, to anything. So that's one of the really big positives of, with living in Shepherd's Bush is that you have access to anything at any time. In terms of activities, you have the Shepherd's Bush Market, which is an absolutely wonderful market to find things that perhaps you can't find anywhere else. So you can get your typical fruit and veg, but you can also find like old school vinyl records and trinkets and things like that. Shepherd's Bush also has some wonderful outdoor spaces and some really green, beautiful big parks. It also has a lot of gyms and outdoor activities. In terms of food, there are so many different options to choose from. Of course, you have Westfield Mall, but there are also a number of curry places. And apparently there are over 100 restaurants in the district alone. In terms of transport, you have so many different links. It's absolutely fantastic. So you have the overground, you have tubes connecting to the central, Hammersmith and circle lines, and you also have plenty of bus routes. Number six on our list is Hammersmith. Property sizes and types vary in Hammersmith. So there's a mixture of terraced homes, detached homes, and blocks of flats. Hammersmith doesn't have much greenery, but don't worry, it's got some really beautiful riverside paths. In terms of entertainment, there is so much to do in Hammersmith, from fringe theater, evenings out, to hanging out in the pub, or eating glorious food in different places. Kings Road is where you wanna be for all of these fun activities. Of course, Hammersmith is also well known for the Hammersmith Apollo and the Riverside Studios. Little fun fact about the Riverside Studios, they were an old water pump factory and then BBC decided to convert them into a recording studio. In terms of cuisines there are so many different types of cuisines that you can choose from ranging from places such as West Indies, China, Scotland, India and the list goes on. Transport in Hammersmith is absolutely incredible. You have the district, Piccadilly, Circle and Hammersmith lines as well as a really big bus station with so many different bus routes. So if you're living in Hammersmith you literally can get to London at ease. So that's a really big positive when living in Hammersmith. And number seven on our list is Chiswick. Affluent families flock to the Riverside Chiswick because there is a safe atmosphere and a really slow pace of life. There are plenty of green spaces, parks, gardens, and Chiswick House is an absolutely beautiful place to explore and go for a lovely Sunday afternoon walk. The Chiswick High Road is also a wonderful spot to take a lovely leisurely stroll down with a whole bunch of cafes, shops, and just things to see and do. In terms of housing in Chiswick, most of the homes have an Edwardian, Victorian style, and you also have the mansion flats. Families tend to put their roots down in Chiswick because it is a family conducive environment um, and like I mentioned earlier there is a much slower pace of life and it just seems like the kind of place that you want to bring up kids and settle down and relax. In terms of things to do there are a lot of fantastic restaurants but you also have the Fuller's Brewery which is the largest brewery in London so that's a really fun thing for tourists and locals to do and just a really fantastic experience to go and drink and eat because the restaurant is also amazing at Fuller's Brewery. In terms of shopping, you have some wonderful bookshops, and I mean there are plenty of bookshops in Chiswick. You also have the Chiswick Sunday Market where you can buy your fruit and veg, fresh meat, fresh fish, just everything that you want to stock up on for the rest of the week going forward. There's a hidden gem in Chiswick called the Old Cinema, and this is literally like an old antique shop inside an old cinema. So that's something that one definitely has to check out. A lot of locals know it, spend time there and take their friends there when they're visiting. In terms of transport, Chiswick also has its own tube line. It is a little bit slower than normal, but don't worry, it will take you about 30 minutes to get into central London. So those are our top seven places to live in West London. Hope that you guys enjoyed listening to all the fun facts of each place in today's video. If you are looking for a new property, don't forget to go on the Move Bubble app. There are plenty of brilliant video walkthroughs of apartments and also some general renting advice if you need any help. That's it from me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you all have a beautiful day and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!